Hi there guys, it's Rick here. Hope you're all doing extremely well out there. I know I am. God, it only seems like yesterday that I pumped out the last video. Well, it actually was yesterday. <laughs> what am I talking about? Who knows? Anyway, today I've got a cracker of a subject for you. Um, it's something that's really, really exciting to study and will hopefully give you a completely different sound uh, with not only your improvising, but um, when you create sequences and all that kind of thing. And we're, what we're talking about today is modal arpeggios. So what exactly is a modal arpeggio? Essentially, the way that I see it, a modal arpeggio contains every single note of whichever mode that it is that you're focusing on. Uh, but there's a specific structure to what we play and uh, we usually stack them in thirds. So essentially what we end up with is uh, a seventh arpeggio, so with the formula one, three, five, seven, um, and then the extensions above that seventh arpeggio, so the ninth, eleventh, and thirteenth. That gives us all seven tones of uh, a mode. Uh, so let's, for example, let's take the key of F major. Okay, just playing a, a standard F major seven arpeggio uh, chord here. Then I've got arpeggios on the brain. Um, so. What we're going to do is we're going to stack thirds. We're going to play a, a third every time, but it's diatonic to this key, okay? So we're going to take the first, third, fifth, seventh. Okay, we end up with an F major seven, obvious. But then above that, we're going to get the ninth, eleventh, and thirteenth notes that we missed out. Okay, and that is a modal arpeggio. One, three, five, seven, nine, eleven, thirteen, one at the top, okay? Notice how it sounds completely different to It's exactly the same notes, but in that specific order, stacking thirds, okay? And what it does is it yields some absolutely stunning sounds, just really open and fresh sounding stuff, rather than the pretty predictable sort of scales up and down that most of us spend our whole lives playing. So exploring this kind of sound world with the modes is just, I find it incredibly inspiring. So this is why I'm showing it to you. Okay, so that's our first sequence. Okay, notice here what we're, we're actually playing is, the first arpeggio is just a straight ahead seventh arpeggio, in this case F major seven. But the next portion of it, is a G minor 7 arpeggio. So we're juxtaposing or putting together an F major 7 and a G minor 7. Okay? That's the sound that it gives us. It's remarkable. So awesome to, to explore these kind of sounds. Anyway, that's our first pattern. It follows that what we can do is we can start on each individual note of the major scale so that we play through Dorian, Phrygian, Lydian, Mixolydian, Aeolian and Locrian modes and apply the same sequence. It's just straight ahead thirds, okay, stack thirds. So let's start here. This is a, a chord number two, okay, so G minor seven. So we get, that's our Dorian modal arpeggio. So nice and steady. Good, beautiful sound. Okay, let's move up to chord number three now. So A minor seven. You recognize that? That's a classic major seven arpeggio. Classic voicing, standard voicing here. Okay. If we put it over the A, you can really hear that dark Phrygian sound. Okay. And again, sorry. different to a straight ahead scale up and down. Okay, so that's our Phrygian modal arpeggio. We'll move on to Lydian now. Good, so nice and slowly. So that's a combination of B flat major seven and C dominant seven. There's our major, uh, sorry, dominant seven here. Okay, good. Let's move on to our mixolydian mode. So position number five. So 
So nice and steady. Good. Then number six. Once more. Whoops. Make sure you don't mess it up like I just did. And then finally, number seven, Locrian mode. Good. I find these amazing, these modal arpeggios. I could practice them all day long, especially with a bit of reverb, a bit of delay, get a clean sound on, and away you go with the dreamy, <laughs> dreamy sequences. I love it. Okay, so what I suggest you do is you practice those really hard. Make sure that you take your time over them. Really go, f concentrate on training your ears into the sound world that these modal arpeggios create. You know, we're not dealing with technique here. Um, you know, I'm pretty sure arpeggios are sick to death of being thraped with sweet picking all the time. So take it, I know I do it, so, you know, I'm guilty just like the next guy, but, uh, you know, take your time over this and really sort of digest the sound that these modal arpeggios create. It's just, it's incredible, it's wonderful stuff to explore. Okay, so why don't we move on from that? Now that we've got our modal arpeggios in order, uh, we can apply sequences. To, to these. So why don't we kick off straight away with our first position. So we're going to take a sequence and apply it uh, to each modal arpeggio. So once we've got one sequence, then we just then apply it diatonically, you know. So really simple principle. So what we're going to do is this sequence. Beautiful sound, once more. Okay, so let me just break down what I'm playing here intervallically. So we know mode-wise it's just one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Ionian mode, in this case F. So I'm going to tell you intervallically what the notes we are, what the notes are that we're playing. So we've got the root, three, five, nine, seven, five, that's six or thirteen, okay? Nine, eleven, six or thirteen slightly out of tune, then major 7, 5th root, so let me play that once more, okay, beautiful sound, completely different to, excellent stuff, so now that we've got that sequence of intervals, Using our modal arpeggio, we can apply it to each one. So, once more. Okay, third. Do that once again. Okay, always keep these nice and slow so that you can really hear the sound that they create. Okay. Once more, this is our Lydian. Yes, down here. Then we're up to Mixolydian now. Once more. Now, Aeolian. Once more. Okay, and then finally, Locrian. Oops. Ignore that passing note. <laughs> And then we're back to <laughs> you see I mess up like the best of them okay so that's taking a sequence and just applying it uh, to our modal arpeggio to create these incredible sounds like I said before turn your gain off put your clean on get some reverb bit of delay and uh, 
you know, it, it's incredible what you can come up with just creating your own sequences. So that's one. Okay, so let me show you the second sequence now. This is um, inspired by a guy called guitar player called Nick Randall. Uh, he posted a video about this years and years ago. So got to give him credit for this. And this sequence goes as follows. <laughs> So beautiful that. Okay, so one, three, five, seven, nine, three, eleven, or four, and then down to your root. Okay, and then once we've done that, um, we go straight to the fifth, thirteenth, major seven, ninth to the fifth at the top, so beautiful. Okay, and then you can apply it to every single one. I won't show you every single one. Let's do the Dorian. God, so, so cool sounding. So it's really, really important to just sit down and work out these sequences. Take your time over it. This is not a technical exercise. This is more of a musical exercise. You know, so open your ears to the sounds that you create. And uh, it really, doing this kind of thing really forces you to tune your ear in. Rather than just concentrate on technique all the time, concentrating on technique all the time, you know, um, that will only get you so far. It's really important if you want to expand and work on your musicality, this is a great way to do it. Um, so, you know, I urge you to spend as much time as possible on this stuff. And again, it's all diatonic. It sounds incredibly open and fresh and doesn't have that diatonic sound whatsoever. So explore it all, see what you can spot with uh, the triads that are contained with each, within each modal arpeggio and uh, just keep your mind open to learning. That's the main thing here. Anyway, I hope you've enjoyed this video. <laughs> I certainly enjoyed doing it. Um, Make sure you check out my website, 50% off still, 50% off. That means the bundle, which has well over 30 odd hours of video footage, as well as PDFs and backing tracks, is under $100. That's insane. So it's a great way to support what I do. So head on over there and go get it. Anyway, thanks for checking in, guys. I will see you real soon for the next video. Cheers.